All right, let's get into it. This is the 10 gigahertz continuous wave Doppler radar that I'll be talking about in this video. I use this radar that I built to collect measurements on drone propeller rotations and other Doppler, Doppler things. So here we go. This is the radar system setup and the actual RF components over here, which I'll be explaining in a bit of detail in the further with a further few slides to come so here we go it starts with the voltage controlled oscillator which is this black case over here we have VTune ground um, plus V which is the voltage that's supplied and powers the device F slash S which kind of we can pick which frequency we want to operate at and then the RF output so here on the right we have the data sheet for this specific VCO um, like I said, that F slash S allows us to pick which frequency we want. So by um, hooking it up to 0 volts, we get this frequency, and hooking it up to 5 volts, we get this frequency. I have it hooked up to 0 volts, so we'll be working with this 9.95 gigahertz. And plus V, I think it was specified that it's at 12 volts somewhere down here in this paper. Um, not pictured right now, but then we have the ground, which is hooked up into the circuit board on the left, which is shown over here. And we also have VTune. So uh, VTune can be used to vary the voltage, and it, it'll vary the uh, the frequency that's being outputted. But since we're using this as a continuous wave device, I only have a straight up five volts going into VTune. Oh, and I should also mention the output power over here. Um, this output power refers to this RF low. So uh, tested, it was either 12.6 or 13.6, but on average, um, the specifications say it should be from 10 to 14 dBm. Uh, I tested this myself using a, uh, what is that device called? I can't remember it off the top of my head, but our, our values or our power output was around 8 dBm I think but that's just what you get when you order parts from eBay so you gotta roll with it. Next up from the VCO we have the two-way power splitter so this takes that uh, we'll go with 12 dBm for now that 12 dBm output and it splits it into two equal parts so 12 dB minus 3 dB since it's a two-way splitter equal parts uh, gives us 9 dBm. So we have 9 dBm going into our transmit chain, which is this 1 here, signified by the 1. The 2 refer um, refers to the reference signal. It's being used as a reference signal for the IQ mixer. And we'll talk about the mixer in um, a little bit, but I have the data sheet for the power splitter over here. Nothing too important. Just know that as it goes up in the numbers of ways that the, the power is split, it'll always be split equally. So next up, coming out of that one port from the two-way power splitter, we have the attenuator. The attenuator is important because it reduces the power that's transmitted before amplification. So um, I'll explain why that's important once we talk about the actual power amplifier. but. Just know for now that these attenuators, um, they usually have graphs which make it very easy to understand how much of the transmit power is being attenuated. So um, in this case, it's around 13 dB at 10 gigahertz. And we can also look at this graph up here. So 13 dB, um, not too important. This is the main reason we have the attenuator. Next up, we have the power amplifier, and it should be noted that all amplifiers require some form of power. Uh, these are active components, so uh, like the VCO, you're going to need a um, V plus and a ground. So again, we have the graphs here from the data sheets, which are very, very helpful, and it shows the gain here of at 10 gigahertz, it's around 23 dB. And another thing that's really important for amplifiers is the, the output power at 1 dB compression. So basically this is saying at 10 gigahertz, 
you can only have you can only transmit up to 18.5 dBm. It, if you go higher than that, um, it's still going to stay at 18.5 dBm, and on top of that, you risk uh, saturating your amplifier, and that that is not good. Then you won't have your amplifier might not work in that case. So that's why we're attenuating our signal before it gets to the amplifier. So what was it? I, let's just say it was at minus six dBm um, before coming into the amplifier. Minus six plus twenty three is uh, seventeen. I hope that's right. I don't know, but. <laughs> We're going to say it's 17 dBm, and that is under 18.5, so we're good to go. So another thing that you should note is that when you open up these data sheets, you can see a table on the very first page, and you should always check out what the DC voltage and DC current is. So let me just zoom in here. So this DC voltage is at 5 volts, and the current is at 290 or 260 milliamps. So just keep that in mind whenever you're um, hooking up your, system, your, your systems and your power supplies. Because if it doesn't work, it might be because of this. So next up, um, coming out of the power amplifiers, we put our signal into the transmit antennas. So, or I should say singular, transmit antenna. That signal is transmitted, hits a target, wherever that target is. The echo signals are reflected back into the receive signal or into the receive antenna excuse me and that signal is connected to a low noise amplifier so like I said before all amplifiers are active components so you need a plus 5 volts or whatever the specified um, voltage supply is and a ground so in this case it is at 5 volts and 42 milliamps again we have the graphs over here super helpful it's not so important about the output power in terms of the low noise amplifiers. Uh, I say this because this is after you you um, hit the target and you're receiving the reflected signals. Typically, those values are going to be or those signals are going to be very weak. So um, gain and the gain is really important here, and you typically want a very low noise figure for your low noise amplifiers. And I actually have a second low noise amplifier um, just to increase the strength of those signals, those receive signals. Um, notice that the gain is much higher, 40 dB, but um, also the noise figure is higher. So uh, with additional amplification, you introduce more noise to your signal. Um, uh, yeah, and you kind of just want to play around with these just to see which gives you the best results. At least that's what I did. If you don't have that luxury and you're trying to order your parts before you build your system, then you should typically try to keep the lower noise figure device in front of the higher. So we have our, um, our receive antenna over here, our lowest noise figure amplifi amplifier, and then our higher noise figure amplifier. So this is 3 dB. This one is noise figure about 1.7 dB. So this one also, or this low noise amplifier also requires a pretty high current at 450 milliamps and the the voltage required is 15 volts. Following the amplifiers we have a bandpass filter. So this filters out all of our unwanted, well, not all of them, but this filters out the signals um, outside of this specific range of 9.75 gigahertz to 11.25 gigahertz and you can see well these graphs kind of say the same thing but the insertion loss is zero at these specific frequencies which is great um, I have that 10 gigahertz device so I want to make sure everything that I collect at least the Doppler um, is within this passband because as we go outside of that range we can see that it drops off uh, quite a bit and there's quite a bit of loss introduced to those signals. So after the bandpass filter, we send that receive signal into our IQ mixer. So remember um, that local oscillator signal from the two-way power splitter up here comes here. 
and then the si- that signal is mixed with the receive signal to produce an, an in phase signal and a quadrature. So these are pretty much the same thing. Um, the only difference is that the quadrature signal has a 90 degrees phase shift compared to the in phase. So what that allows us to do is collect um, directional velocities. So we can tell if an object is moving away from us or towards us, which can be very useful depending on what your application is. And this is also a uh, double port or a double balanced IQ mixer. Um, but the, the important thing to note is that there are two I ports and two Q ports. So since I only want to use one of them, or one of each, I put some DC terminal blocks. I'm not really sure if that's what it's called, but um, we use these to prevent the signal from going out of these two ports. And we, we maintain the signal within these two. Um, <clears throat> I have the data sheet up here. It's not, it wasn't incredibly useful to me, but it, it helps to make sure that you're working in the correct frequency. So next up we have our low pass filter and this is similar to the bandpass filter except it goes from zero to uh, whatever the specified value is. So after mixing our signal we had our 10 gigahertz we had our 10 gigahertz signal coming in and then our 10 gigahertz plus whatever Doppler was collected and when we mix that the, our output is just that Doppler frequency. So we want to make sure that Every, anything else is filtered out and the Doppler frequency expected from uh, from propellers spinning are only up to I don't know maybe like 400 kilohertz 4, 4, 000, 4 kilohertz 4 kilohertz excuse me um, but this goes up to 3.4 gigahertz so uh, a little bit of leeway there and I also have another low pass filter because I'm a baller yeah and this one cuts off at 100 kilohertz. I also sample my signals at 44.1 kilohertz. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later though. So that wraps up the RF components of our radar system. Uh, that goes into or these two outputs of the in phase and the, the quadrature signals after they're filtered goes into an audio cable which is plugged into my laptop and we read these data, or we read this raw data that's collected in Audacity. All right, here we are. This is the 10 gigahertz radar setup, and it starts with this little power supply down here, which powers the bigger power supply, the bench top DC power. There's all the wires connected here, and then that we have our, our uh, transmit signal and receive signal going up into the horn antennas with the audio cable going into Audacity. So I'll just show you how it works real quick. Uh, we turn on, we start recording, and then um, nothing happens yet, but then we come down here and we turn on our power. So there we go, there we have it. We can see that it's turned on now. And if I move my hand in front, can see that it picks that up so we'll be able to process this data later but I'll give you a real quick demo of the drone flying hopefully I can do this with one hand so there we go make it move a little bit and now I'll land her and there we go so that's that now Stop and stop this and then we'll process this data. Now we'll get into the signal processing part of this video and I'll go ahead and copy and paste this hand waving part and we'll go to solo so this is the only thing that is being exported. We'll export by control shift E and then I'll save it into this folder and I'll call it hand wave, making sure that it's saved as a wave file. So save that. And then we'll go to MATLAB here and make this hand wave. And 
and wave again. And these are actually in the same folder, so I don't actually need all of this, but I'll just keep it anyways. So basically, this is a very simple MATLAB script that reads our data and it generates a time signal plot, an FFT plot, and a spectrogram of this raw radar data of my hand waving. So I'll run one section at a time. Uh, we have our RX signal, which is um, broken up into the, that I and Q signal. So we have our in phase and our quadrature in each channel, which is also shown in Audacity uh, here with this left and right. But I have it sampled down to a, a, a smaller sampling rate just so I can see the, the actual results. Since we don't actually need the entire 44.1 kilohertz. Um, and then I'll plot the time signal so you can see what that looks like in phase and quadrature. And then here is the FFT or the power spectral density. So this is the spread of Doppler from um, hand waving. Uh, we have a maximum velocity of eh and eh. <laughs> Don't really know how to describe that. And here's a spectrogram. So the most solid line represents our hand moving back and forth. So you can see in the positive velocities and the negative velocities and going back and forth through time. Um, you can also notice that there are some reflections here. Uh, these are actually unwanted, undesirable uh, IQ distortions, which is due to hardware imperfections and especially buying parts from eBay, like including the VCO, the mixer, and some of the amplifiers, uh, it's surely going to give us some problems. So th there are ways to filter these out and to make your signal look a lot better. But for the sake of this video, I just have a very simple script just to be able to see what we're looking at. So let's do the other one. We'll go to drones and I'll just pick uh, 35 seconds to 38 seconds. And I'll do the same thing, copy and paste. I'll just delete all that, copy and paste, and then Control Shift E to export that again. We'll call this one drone. Again, saved in the WAV file, same location open up here and then we'll type in drone so I'm actually gonna change the sampling rate to I don't know 8 kilohertz and what this does is it allows us to have a bigger velocity range that we can see our our signal in so let's run this let's just run the whole thing and yeah, here we are. This is the micro Doppler spread of the of the drone and the blades spinning around, which you can see over here. Looks like it has a maximum velocity of around, uh, I'll say 37 meters per second. But we can take a closer look by decreasing the interval. Uh, so let's make it one second instead of two seconds. Now you can get it to see it a little better. I also started made the starting point uh, one second in. And let's go even smaller, so 0 0.2. See what that looks like. And yeah, there you go. Uh, another thing you can do is normalize the frequency axis. So let's control T to uncomment these sections and then control R to comment these sections out. F5 to run and there's the normalized velocity so another thing you can do is you can take out all of the uh, everything except for the plot and this is useful for image classification if you're doing machine learning or yeah if you pretty much that's all I use it for so that's a handy little code to remove everything except for the plot so this concludes the tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them down in the description. I can't guarantee that I'll get to you uh, just because, <laughs> I don't know. It just If you need help, uh, hopefully the people that watch this video are willing to leave some comments um, in the bottom. And if you have any suggestions or uh, if I said anything incorrectly, 
please drop a comment and correct me for the sake of, you know, everyone. All right. Bye.